have the star of 2019 who sold his company for over 800 million dollars. Um, we were just joking in the back earlier that the the first time you met me was a little over 13 years ago in your office and I don't actually think you liked me very much. And then I kind of joked, I go, wait a second, I don't know if you even like me now. Depends what sort of questions you have for me. Yeah, there you go. So we talked yesterday about your past to explain to people why I think so highly of you. You've had some of the biggest players in the industry back you. Um, but also you got some construction guys who've made a bundle of money, put some significant money into your deals. So you've got some big names on the street. You know, I don't know if you want to share some of them. Well, um, my uh, one of my partners is a guy by the name of Ryan Beatty, who's uh, a large shareholder of Artemis, and he was a large shareholder of, of Atlantic. And uh, he and I are, are friends first, but business partners as well. Um, but he's been a great supporter. Um, I think the other the other uh, key supporter that we have um, at Artemis is. Uh, a couple of institutional funds who did well with us at, at Atlantic, but uh, the, the biggest natural resources investor, which is BlackRock, out of London in in our sector, um, they own nine percent of the company, um, and that's that's due to a, a long-standing relationship of twenty-five years. And and in fact, they had to go to their head office and get approval to invest in a company such a like, small uh, like junior. Ours. Yeah, and is that with Evy that you de yeah. deal with? Yeah, interesting. That's, I've never heard them investing in such a small kind of startup like that before. Yeah. Okay. So now you're trading in the dollar forty range. We talked about jurisdictions that you probably want to focus on. And what do you want to say? Like, why should someone buy Artemis rather than Velocity or vice versa? What is the value proposition that you present? And explain what Velocity is. Well, I, I, I won't comment on Velocity because we, we're a shareholder of Velocity ourselves. But... Um, why, why, why should someone own Artemis? Um, I think, I think the um, uh, there's lots of choice to invest in this hall and, and the in industry broadly, um, and maybe Artemis is not for every everybody. But the, the 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 common theme that I think most people should consider, whether it's with Artemis or or some of the other. Uh, key industry professionals is is people, and and Marin, you're a big um, investor in people, and um, there are a lot of people who say that they've built mines and 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 participated in this industry in various ways, but not everyone has had the same experience and and successful experience, and and even a winner has many fathers, <laughs> and and even and even those who've who've not done well, it, it, that that's not necessarily. You know, I, I think we all learn by our mistakes, and and I've made several over my thirty five years of, of of career, and and uh, so so ten tenacity, um, getting but, job the job done. But I also eventually. think it's, it's your cost base. Like uh, when I published a report on, it, I said. You're the largest investor in your own deal, which is checkmark. I like that. And you paid 90 cents. I think it was 90 or 95 cents. I can't remember what the financing price was. And I said, guys, just chill. Be an alligator. Put your stink bids in. And it actually went down under a buck for a few days because the market got scared and whatever, two people or five people sold or whatever. And you could pick up stock pretty close, whether it's 90 cents or 94. It makes no difference in the long run. If this is going to work, it's going to work. So always look at the cost base of the management team and how much skin they have in the game. You've invested millions into this story. I think insiders own 40%, 45, 45%. Yeah. Guys, that's pretty rare that insiders and a cost base of 90 cents, which when they went public, it was trading at a buck. Uh, that's a good arb for a shareholder on the outside to come in and pick up stock. Now, when you walk around here and you look at things, what are the first things you look at? Give some tips to the crowd, you know, uh, that would look at. So let's get past the people. We've talked about the people and let's get past the jurisdictional risk. Someone like me might be comfortable in Serbia or Bosnia, but someone like you won't. So let's leave the political risk to each individual. Project wise, what are the first things you look for, Steve? Well, you, you mentioned jurisdiction is really important. Um, and and I've, I've been on the wrong end of countries taking back deposits, uh, whether it be uh, overtly or surreptitious, surreptitiously through the courts, 
And, and so I think you want to be investing uh, in, a, in a mine where you are not going to be the GDP of that country. I think it's important that, uh, and, 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 and in some cases, you, there's a risk that mining companies, when they invest, can end up taking the role of government, whether it be by providing uh, uh, health services and, 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 and other support, support services. You don't want to be that. You want to be a significant player in, in a particular country and you want it to have transparent rules. Uh, what you're saying is fly investors. under the radar. <laughs> Bit better under the radar than being the the GDP of the of the country for sure. But from a project standpoint, what what do you want to see? I'd, I w w our preference not, and this is not everyone's, but our preference in the gold space, and and there's lots of different commodities here in in the conference. So so I, I will talk specifically to gold because that's where my greatest interest lies. Um, um, is is uh, underground versus open pit? Both can be very productive and very economic, but the risks attached to an open pit mine versus an underground mine are much lower. So, so our specific uh, mandate or objectives are to, to partner with, with people and help build uh, open pit based projects rather than underground, but we're open to uh, underground, but you need grading, you need continuity and all those other things. So as a, as an, uh, a non-industry professional uh, investor, I would suggest open pits a, a lower risk, and that's one of the things we look at. Um, low strip ratios, medium grades in open pits. You know, when I say it's, it's some, somewhere between 1.2 and two grams would be awesome. Uh, with a three to five to one strip ratio is, an, is another uh, thing that you should look for. Good metallurgy. Um, Non-refractory, in other words, it's it, it can come out in a in a very straightforward process you, you, rather than you get don't roasted. need a roaster which costs an extra two three hundred million dollars. Yeah, or you get a huge discount at the smelter. Yeah, and and countries where the, where mining is already an industry, um, and it doesn't have to be in gold specifically because you can you know, a, a guy driving a truck in a coal mine can also drive a truck in a. So in I'm, I'm going to throw one, an oddball question at you. Let's say three deposits that you saw and you kind of wish you jumped at that have had a run that truly had it and what characteristics did it have before it got there sure well the the, the one that did get away from atlantic um in its in its early days was a deposit called windfall lake um in uh, in Quebec, which is now owned by Cisco Mining, um, that's a that's a great deposit. There's lots of gold but that's there. That's really looks high deep. Grade. They're hitting some deep targets there. That there, there, there are, but there's a lot of surface mineralization there too. And I and I and they they're considering it as an as a as a an underground proposition. I think it can be both. I think there's a, a nice open pit there. I've mentioned this to the management of Cisco over over the years, and I, you know, whether they pursue it or not, I don't know. But um, uh, that would be one. Okay couple of others that stand out that got away um, nothing, nothing comes to mind and, that, and that's an in indication of how difficult it is to find good assets in this business um, th th there's there's always some sort of an issue and, and and generally in our experience when we do our due diligence on on uh, partnering on, on assets the biggest single issue that we come across is a, a, an optimistic layer upon layer of technical assumptions where um, when we look at it and a, and, a and, a, and, a, and a project may have, let's say 20 million tons at 1.5 grams and they're gonna build a 10 year mine life, two million tons a year process plant when we have a look at it, we reevaluate re it from drill hole up. If you take away some of those layer upon layer of assumptions, what happens is often we will get, we will get a different, a very different number. Uh, and our approach is different. We use geostats rather than some of the old traditional methods. And, and statistics are a wonderful new technology that has come to come to uh, bring real value to the, to this sector. So we use geostats to to do our own resource estimate. And that same deposit may come back typically as 25 million tons at 0.9 or 0.8 grams. And, and the result of that is the economics are materially different. So um, you know, in some ways to a non-professional industry investor, 
that perhaps can scare the hell out of some of you, it, and, and it should. Um, and that's why I always say, and I said it right at the outset, stick with the people who know what they're doing and have done it before and have got a lot of their own money on the line. Well, you, you, you hit all the categories. That's why I bought fully diluted the way the exchange wants me to report. I think it's what, 4.8%. So now, is this your only deal till you sell Artemis or are you going to do another? You know, some of these guys have like three or four or five deals. So I'm putting you on the fire here. No, I, this, I'm, I, I think what you're asking is, that, am I, have I, uh, Are you Monday to am Friday? I, am I distracted on other things? No, I'm not Monday to Friday. Uh, but but my, my focus, our team's focus is 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 100% Artemis. And, uh, and, and that's for a number of reasons, including the fact that we, we are fully invested in, a, in our company. We're going to be doing a site visit later this year, so I'm excited to come look at what Velocity has. Any questions for Stephen Dean? Does Artemis or Velocity own the project in Bulgaria? So Velocity owns the project. They own 70% of the deposit. And of Velocity, Stephen Dean's company, Artemis Gold, owns 39%. Yeah, correct. So 39 or 70. Quick math. How long do you think it'll take you to evaluate the Velocity properties and determine if you're going to be able to do what you want to? And is anything going to be done with GK and the Golden Triangle, or is that something you might divest at some so point? So two questions are, how long is it going to figure out what to do with Velocity? And number two, the GK property in BC. Well, you're right. There, there, we do have a decision to make on Velocity because it doesn't make sense for us to own 39% forever. And, 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 and it's... Uh, one, one way or another, either we would like to own more or a lot more of Velocity, and that is a function of how quickly they progress on their drill program and how quickly they progress on their, on their uh, PFS. Their PFS is due out, I think, at the end of March. Uh, that, will, that will help us decide. Um, but also, what, what we think is important is, that, is Velocity needs to get, a, get scale, and it doesn't have scale yet. That's why it has to invest in, 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 in this exploration program and they're doing that, but we'd like to see a lot more than that. In respect to the GK property, um, we, are, um, we are interested in it. We're probably more likely to find a, a, a very clever uh, partner with exploration strength. We, 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 are, we are good at many parts of the industry, but we're not, we're not uh, experts in all parts. Exploration but is BC's not our strength. But BC is tough right now too. But, um, I actually, I actually like BC. Uh, with the, with Try to the build a mine. Mining alliance up there, I think there's, there's a better chance than there's so You're more optimistic so than are, I am? We are, we are, we are going to do some basic work, but nothing, nothing uh, we're not going to spend a lot of money up there for now. That's interesting. You and I differ on BC. I retired from Copper Mountain because I kind of got tired of BC. I love BC. I live in BC. I'm born and raised in East BC, but it's getting pretty difficult. BC is, is difficult. It's a beautiful province. Yes, it is. What other gold deals do you have shares in? That's something. Well, don't be shy. Just well, me and you. You know, it's it's. <laughs> um, I I, uh, I own a significant piece of uh, one of Lucas Lundin's companies. Lundin Gold is is uh, is is a company. High grade underground Ecuador. Um, and uh, he's a talk about people. He's one of those people uh, who creates value and, and has, has done extra extraordinarily well. Uh, in this business, so once again, I'm backing him. Okay, so you own people. Lug, Lundin Gold. What else? Uh, in gold, that's it. Yeah. And, and Artemis, of course. Yeah. And what about other metals? What other exposure do you have? Um, I, I I have a piece of a company that I'm chairman of called Oceanic Iron Ore. So I think Iron Ore is still got, got a real future. So um, Oceanic is another one. But. Do you own shares in tech? Do you own shares I, in some I do, of the majors? I do own shares in tech. Um, that, that's a historical thing, and I, I, I still think it's a, a great company. It, I think it's undervalued right now significantly. I think that they're they're, uh, they're doing it tough. They're trading at about 0.5 or 0.6 NAVA from the last report I saw, and uh, their peers are trading at much higher than that. It's so because I, of I the coal discount. What's going on there? Um, I don't. I don't really have an explanation to it, but um, I, I think tech has got a wonderful asset base and is, is undervalued. I, I think I think the, the, uh, the, the oil QB sands complex business, is oil incredible. sands business is, is a, uh, a bit of a distraction for some and then QB getting through and, and, and building it on time and, get, and on, on budget is a big question mark for some, but I, I think they'll get there. I think it's a great company. Excellent. We have time for 
We have two minutes. Any other questions for Stephen? Yes, sir. Question is copper, bullish, bearish, neither here nor yeah. there. Well, actually, that's a good point. I, I forgot. I, I, I own a, a little company called Amerigo Resources. Um, it was one of the companies I founded, uh, co-founded with my partner, Klaus Seidler. It's a, it's a wonderful little producer down in, in Chile. Uh, ARG is its, its symbol. Um, so, so I forgot that I that I own a piece of. Must be nice. You have so much money, you just forget about assets here and there. Um, but I like. Before you comment, I, I like copper. I, I think it's frustrated by by global politics, uh, Trump China deals, etc. But the fundamentals of China is, uh, of copper are so strong. So um, whether it's six months or eighteen months, I think copper is a is a is a great commodity to have. I, I'm with you. I think it's just not right now. Everybody talking about this 2019, you know, shortfall, and then they go, okay, no, it's gonna, it didn't happen. It's going to be 2020. A little bit of what's going on in the uranium markets happening in the copper markets. Now, I'm a long-term believer, meaning like you know, a couple of years out, but it will come that plus three dollar copper. I just I don't see it in the next few months. It's not imminent. Any other questions? And I, and I think uh, it needs four dollar copper to develop some of the the development properties that will continue that supply equation. What's your question? What's your opinion on Pebble? I've never asked you that actually in all our discussions. Well, um, it's a massive project, and and cap and the capital is. It'd be about five and a half to six billion. Yeah. So that, so the, there's not many people with a lazy five or six billion dollars uh, to 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 invest in in a, in a project that size. Do you think he gets his permit? Um, I don't know. I, I'd like, for the sake of the industry, I think I, I would Be like to bullish. think so. Yeah. But but um, one of the issues with one of the advantages of the gold industry is relatively low capex. And I, you asked me before, and I know we've got to finish, but I look for for projects where the NPV is a multiple of the capex. If it's a if it's a if it's a, if it's a percentage of the capex, that worries me. Base metals and, and, and bulk commodities typically are percentages of, of MPV. One of the wonderful things about the gold industry is you can get a project with a five or six or 800 million MPV and the capital is two or 300 million. So you combine that with the fact that most companies can find, if you have the right backers, two or three or 400 million dollars in equity to come up with to, to develop a, a, a three or 400 million dollar project. So gold is a wonderful business I, in that I respect. I agree with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.